we see the undertow and we say, there's the undertow. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today I want to talk to you about the 24 teams I'm going to be using to destroy and rend asunder all of my foes and opponents in Kyber 2 this coming season on my alternate account. I have a 6.2 million account and I'm gonna rename it from Zareth Alt to something more epic I think but one way or another right now it's just called Zareth Alt and I had a really good season last season because I have a really strong roster in terms of the foundation that I've laid. I don't have a ton of relics. I've kind of <laughs> I kind of shot myself in the foot in terms of that because I, I was hiding from matchmaking before and uh, now now we're doing things differently because the the rules are different and it's it's been a lot of fun so a lot of good teams here available I only have one galactic legend and so I'm gonna show you guys 24 teams we only need 22 teams theoretically but it's nice to have some redundancy some flexibility and such so let's jump in to this right now Whoa, madness. <laughs> We're in blue stacks. <laughs> I haven't haven't played on blue stacks for a very long time, folks. Probably two years ish. Maybe two years is exaggerating, but it's been a while. It's been a very long time. And it kept crashing on me way back in the day, but my other emulator wasn't working. So we get to play in blue stacks today at least. All right, so half of what happened in my matches, folks, is uh, even though my opponents had the advantage in uh, in their Galactic Legend and, and everything, they had more Galactic Legends, they had Executor, they had something awesome, they didn't, they didn't trust themselves to be able to counter a lot of the teams that I placed on defense. And that, that's a huge part of why I won so many times is because they would lean on their Galactic Legends as a crutch. And I mean, they're a great tool for sure. And I rely on them a lot too, uh, frankly, but they, you, you can't have those be the only options. And so uh, on my defenses, we'll, we'll talk about defense first and then we'll we'll go into offense. So these are the teams that I used on defense. My, my Darth Revan team is good here. The thing that you have to keep in mind, look at all the low relic levels. Remember, I don't have a ton of relic levels on this account. The ones that I do have are there for a specific purpose. Uh, usually it's just for an unlock of some sort. And otherwise, I'm tr slowly trying to move them up, but man, it is tough when you're trying to get another Galactic Legend, when you're moving that direction, uh, you know, trying to get unlock characters, it is super tough. So, Darth Revan, this is a good team. It got a lot of holds, or it got a lot of, uh, drained a lot of banners from a lot of teams, because uh, Darth Revan here is just so crazy. Just so crazy. Uh, because he's so fast. Uh, the rest of them don't really need that much, frankly. I, I mean, you can optimize the squad, for sure. There there's no question about that. But the the real thing, uh, the real strength behind this team is how fast they are. If he can go first, wonderful. 352 is great. If you scout your opponent and see that they have an optimized team with uh, like Imperial Troopers, for instance, they can counter this, then maybe throw Darth Talon in instead of HK. I know that it reduces your overall hitting of that ability, but if you do that, then your Darth Revan's going to end up being really fast. At, you know, the plus 20 speed is really nice. Sith Marauder in, on that hand, on that count, if you do have a high relic Sith Marauder, which a lot of you do because you've unlocked Sith Eternal, then Sith Marauder is a really great guy to target with extra, extra like high health. I know that sounds crazy, but with the additional 30% that you get from Darth Talon, Sith Marauder is a great candidate for extra health because it's really tough to take him out uh, if he has high health on a uh, Darth Revan team with Imperial Troopers, especially if Darth Talon is there giving him an, an additional 30%. So something to think about here. This squad is very good uh, if you have them high speed. If they're low speed, they're fairly mediocre. High speed or bust here, folks. I mean, you, you could keep them for offense if they're low speed and still take things out, but this is one of the best teams on defense if you don't have Galactic Legends available. Next, we have 
General Skywalker and the 501st. Now, this team is great. Remember, if you need to take out like a Ray team or something, General Skywalker will do the trick. He'll do you nicely, in fact, because you can take out Ray. You can take out other Galactic Legends as well sometimes, though, I mean, your, your mileage may vary depending on which one you're taking out. I know that this team actually killed, I think, three different Kenobi teams over the course of the season because no one decided to put Cat in with him. Uh, without Cat on the team, uh, a General or a Jedi Master Kenobi team is pretty vulnerable. So General Skywalker, uh, pretty good on offense too. I, I kept him on offense half the time and ha half on defense, but on defense it's really nice. I mean, people can use Commander Luke to beat it, of course, but if you have a high... Uh, high potency echo which I don't actually but uh, if we pretend like I do or if they didn't mod their commander Luke team correctly echo can actually stun two-fifths of that team because two of them are droids Chupio is a droid if you remember so th this team is really good on defense it steals banners and if people want to use the really inefficient mirror match then <laughs> then they can be inefficient I guess and they're using the general Skywalker team anyways which is a push in my opinion, this is one of the best defensive teams still, even it, even now, even though you can counter it easily with a few different teams, this 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 keep, team keeps on ticking, guys. Really good team on offense and defense, just not efficient if you're using him on offense, unless you're doing undersized things, <laughs> which you know, a lot of people are required to do those uh, out of necessity. So, <laughs> anyways, we've got... Padme with Cat here, and remember, I only have one Galactic Legend, and it's Jedi Master Luke, and he is on offense almost all the time, because I, what I learned is, on defense, everyone beats him. Every single thing under the sun beats him, so uh, why put him on defense usually? I mean, sometimes you can load up your defense, but I remember the one time that I lost, <laughs> Jedi Master Luke just hung out there alone, and uh, <laughs> they didn't kill him. But they killed everything else, and I couldn't clear them because I didn't have my Jedi Master Luke. That, that was the one time I lost, and it was because I, I didn't need to put them down. I could have put almost any other team down. They, they ran out of teams. So, uh, anyways, just something to be thinking about. This Padme team, you can probably counter it fairly easily. I, I, what I need to do is get more relics on this team because I know that this team, at least at the core, I know that some of them you don't need, but you can use this team, actually, the Padme with Cat, to counter uh, those Jedi Master Kenobi teams with Cat. Uh, apparently, that's that's what I hear, but I, I think I need more than Relic 2 on Padme. So, something I'm going to be looking at. I mean, it's such a tough thing, though, because I'm so close to getting Jedi Master Kenobi, or at least not so close, but <laughs> I, I have... I'm about halfway there, but I need so many relic levels, and you don't need any of the relic levels for him on any of the characters that are needed here for this team, and so, I don't know, but where do I get Padme to? Is Relic 5 enough? We'll, we'll discover that, guys. We'll, we'll find out together. But this team is decent on defense as well. If if someone wants to use like a Palpatine with Vader comp, that can work. If if they allow you to have a single turn though, this team can really turn it on. And I mean, I saw a lot of people use like Darth Revan teams on it. A lot of a lot of really crazy stuff. And if they want to do that and they don't realize that Cat is in there, if they think that it's like Shock T or something, this is a really nasty surprise team. Granted, you can put Ahsoka with like Commander Luke. You can put Ahsoka with or cat rather with bando uh, like this team below you can put her with a lot of different teams uh, you know with a ray team with kenobi of course if you have him uh, but padme is a pretty good place for her uh, frankly if if you have cat but no other place for her uh, it's, it's fine it, it this team has saved me a lot of grief has given my opponents a lot of grief. Lots of grief going around with with Ahsoka, which isn't to say that she has any dealings with the bounty hunter grief. So, we have Beskar here, guys. And remember, Beskar, you, you need to get... If you're at 6.2, if you're at 6 million, you probably need to have this team unlocked at the very least because you need to be working on Executor if you don't already have Executor. So, Beskar with IG and Quill, uh, really, really strong 
strong together. Of course, you want to have Beskar be just a little bit slower than Quill. So Quill is going to go. He's going to make everyone on his team uh, faster, give them all 25% turn meter. Then Be Beskar is going to go to second. He's going to put it go into whistling bird stance poop stance is what i call it usually and then everyone else does their aoe's he gets a ton of whistling birds uh, stacks and then you just go ham on the rest of the team so uh, you, you see i have beskar here um this is this is my alternate accounts beskar of course so he's he's at 270 speed and at, right now only at relic 5 but 94 76 on damage so not too bad we're trying to slowly get his relics ramped up as well uh, so just something for you to shoot for guys remember offense only on him don't get crit damage of any sort because it is the worst kind of useless on that character okay now i have and this is all these are all teams that i just put on defense by default almost so i mean i i, I was pretty flexible in fact i changed a lot of things up but this this was these are the last few times that I placed on defense. So I, I put my Ewoks down. Remember, I do have the Omicron on Chirpa, so that gives an extra 30 speed to everyone. And then if you can make Pat Blue fast, he gets another 25% speed on top of that. It kind of disappointed me. After I put that down, almost no one attacked my Ewoks at any, at any point. But it is pretty nice. Plus 25% speed on Pat Blue, so you make him kind of fast. This isn't super fast. I need to speed him up, but 234. I don't even have any gear 12 gear on him, so he can be another 22 speed faster just by default. And then plus 30 speed from Chirpa, another 25% from this, and he is a crazy fast little ball of fluff. So try to try to try that out, guys. I mean, <laughs> the the only problem, of course, is if you have a really fast Pat Blue and the rest of them are just kind of fluff, like eventually your opponent's gonna get a turn and just destroy you. So Gotta slowly work on getting these these gear levels up, though. I don't know with what gear, frankly. <laughs> so, anyways, next we have this weird Akbar team, and I know that this looks like just like a revenge team of like, oh, you have you had to relic these characters to unlock to unlock certain characters, and you just want to use make sure they're being used. But here's the thing: there's a there's a secret little thing here, and I, I need to I need to make this a little bit better. But check it out. Okay, so Admiral Akbar gives 25 speed, I believe, uh, from his leadership yeah so plus 25 speed to rebels uh, on top of that though wedge has this really sneaky thing and i've showed this to you guys a few times but uh so wedge has extra offense but then he has plus nine speed for each ally with full health so at the start of the match he's plus nine speed for each ally so i don't think that counts himself so that that's that's still four allies which accounts for a total of uh, 36 extra speed on top of the plus 25 speed that you get from akbar and that means that you get like plus you could call it plus 60 speed just to make things easier but it also gives that to bigs and so uh, my wedge isn't super fast here you can see 204 but you know he's plus 60 speed so 260 i mean that that's okay and then my bigs i need to I need to speed him up. He has, he has all these cool relics, or he has all these cool 6E because he's a pilot that I really need. He's a tank. I need to put more relics on him as well, but who knows where I'm going to find the relics. But another 60 speed on him, 283 speed, 284 really. I mean, not too bad. That, that's going to surprise a lot of people. And if he gets the opening barrage, then the rest of the team, I mean, he's going to call Wedge to assist and someone else to assist, and it's going to open the door for maybe, uh, I mean, it's not really a turn meter train exactly, but you can you can really make this team do a lot of damage on its opening volley. And if you can do that, I mean, they're, they're all, they all hit hard. They all just die really easily afterwards. So just something to keep in mind, guys, that, that Wedge... Uh, extra speed boost lead is something sneaky that I really want to mess around with. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can trap some people this season doing that. We also have Geos here, and Geos pretty much speak for themselves. I put them on defense in the back because, especially at this GP, I mean, we're getting to the point where everyone can counter Geos really easily, but if you put them in the back, there's, also, there's always the chance that they've already used their Darth Vader team, and if they've done that, then maybe they use Treya and burn a lot of banners, or maybe they've already used Treya, or maybe the, both of those teams are on defense now because Mara Jade makes
makes everything way better on defense and Darth Talon makes things better on defense and those teams are commonly on defense now and if they can't if, if they break through your really tough bottom zone and they get to the back wall and they don't have something that can deal with geos you can't zerg a geo team down there's not really any way to do that you either have a counter or you don't Frankly, there's a ton of counters out there, so it's not really big of a big deal these days, but, I mean, I've run into that on Prevail Man even as recently as last season. Uh, it's like I killed all these really awesome teams, and then I got to the Geos, and I'm like, I've got nothing. I, I don't have a team that can beat this. It, it's really rough, and so, uh, you know, lower GPs, that matters more, but this this works this works just fine uh, on, uh, you know, at 6 million ish i mean it works it works fine ish <laughs> don't expect it to work for too much longer but it's a good team on defense eventually we'll transition it to offense and give them a little bit more love <laughs> maybe not <laughs> they're geos after all so we've got treya and company this is i mean this isn't a strong team obviously i, I put I, I made treya at up to relic one at one point just because i wanted her to be around for the uh I was trying to do the the big game hunting where I'm fighting a lot of people with Galactic Legends and I wasn't going to have any Galactic Legends and then they kind of strangled the off meta a little bit and I decided to start going for Galactic Legends and stuff but the thing about Treya is uh, she, she's really resilient. This whole team is really resilient and even though I only have gear 10 on some of them, I mean Darth Talon is only gear 8, T Talon just hides. She just stealths and everything so she makes everyone faster. This whole team, uh, I mean they'll steal some banners. They Sometimes they'll get holds. Treya is really nice on defense. If you have Darth Maul uh, with his Zeta, you can also put him as lead in front of the Darth Treya team, and that, that can do a lot of good work. So, a lot of different options for you. Darth Talon is nice if you want a little speed boost. I mean, Gear 8 isn't going to do that much, but she's survivable because she's in stealth. So, that uh, might be worthwhile, even at 3 stars. Mon Mothma. This is the best version of Mon Mothma until you get Kyle Katarn up and running. I don't have Kyle Katarn up and running. I just have too many projects. I decided to shelf him because this team is good enough without him, frankly. Uh, I, I mean, I, I love Kyle Katarn. He's a great character. Really, really cool. Makes this team a lot better. But uh, Cara Dune at, at gear 11 works fine. She's the one I would swap out if I could. If if I had Kyle Katarn up and ready right now, I would swap out Cara Dune. But it, because I don't, Cara Dune's in here. And I know that a lot of people want to replace Biston instead, but Biston is great. Biston is just really... He's, he's really strong here because he reinforces that turn meter loop but that goes on between Hoth Rebel Scout and POW. So you need someone to be fast here or you, I mean, you can just hope that you don't get killed right away. I mean, this, this isn't a paragon of of offense or defense, guys. This, this team is here to make people use their good squad. So they can use Vader here or they can use Vader on that Geo team. What, what are they going to choose? Like, they can only use Vader on one. I, I hope they choose wisely. In fact, I hope they don't. I hope they use Vader and Treya in the same squad. <laughs> but, you know, death and confusion to our enemies, right? We gotta hope for it, at least. Can't always rely on it. Now, we have this crew team. I, I do really like having crew on offense, or on defense with General Hux, just because of so many people. Uh, it, it made me so sad. I watched, I watched a, my fellow content creator the other day fall into my trap, and then I didn't have a good enough team to actually contain him. He used his Jedi training Ray team on this team, and that is a death knell to Jedi training Ray, except, except it's not exactly a death knell. If Hux is only gear 10 and they can just snipe him out immediately. So, yeah, I'd probably better to have First Order Stormtrooper in here or have higher levels on Hux. I mean, Hux, I'm about to get Finalizer up to 7 stars anyways. I should probably get him up to Relics or something. I did recently get Crew up to Relics just because he's a really good tank and stuff. So this team is also good on offense if you, you just, you kind of need more Relics in a way on offense. On defense, this team can really steal a ton of banners and honestly, it, it gets holds quite a bit too especially with higher relics so finally we have this mando team uh, this is all just for defense of course and then we'll go on offense but uh and we'll, we'll go faster for the offensive teams of course of course we will
sure we will. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so uh, we've got Bo-Katan here. I don't have Maul yet. Maul is Maul's actually not too far away. He's at what 200? He'll be at 240 or something after conquest is up. So. Uh, not too bad. We're getting there, getting there slowly but surely, and and don't call me surely. But uh, with because I only have one Galactic Legend, I don't really need the armor for anything specific. So uh, you know, ideally armor would be higher gear or something like that. Uh, you know, ideally everyone would be higher gear. But this team is pretty good on defense or on offense. People don't really know what to take with against it because Mandos are scary, and so they'll they'll over price they'll have to like overpay for it i mean it's not really worth overpaying but a, a weird team don't don't underestimate the power of a weird team on defense people will overspend on it just because they don't know what to deal with to do with it they're like oh sabine with her zeta what the hell like why why is that why is gamora and uh, you know They'll, they'll be afraid of the red Django. Everyone else is purple, and they'll be like, "Oh, Django can do a lot of damage here." And I mean, he can, but it, it's not a reason to fear. Like, Django is a lot scarier on, on a separatist team because a separatist team, at least, he's generally guaranteed to get one big hit off. Uh, on the Mando team, he's just not really. But this is a good team on offense and defense, depending on what you want to do. I mean, that's basically all of these teams. So, let's talk about offense now, shall we? So, my one good team, my best team, is going to be this Jedi Master Luke team. I usually put him with Jedi Knight Luke if I need to take out a Galactic Legend. Uh, this is my go-to team. I love Shock-T on the squad because Shock-T can heal Jedi Master Luke, and he has so much protection that he, uh, but, you know, and he's a tank, he needs some kind of protection regeneration. And if you don't have Hermit Yoda with him, which Hermit Yoda is wonderful with him because you can just call Hermit Yoda to assist, and you're doing damage and healing with Hermit Yoda every single time uh, but I like Hermit Yoda a lot with Jedi Knight Revan so I mean this is the split that I typically try to use but I mean if you're trying to take down a Galactic Legend yeah you a lot of times you will throw Hermit Yoda in there just because you won't need the rest of your team to be pretty strong sometimes you'll even throw Jedi Revan in there and just crumple the whole squad and into just one awesome Jedi ball and then you know have just like a Basti Jedi team that that can you know kind of destroy us a, a smaller team but you know this is kind of the split Jedi Master Luke truly is the he's the best galactic legend at, at least no he's not the best galactic legend he, he's my favorite to counter all the different other galactic legends out there except I mean I guess Kenobi does a better job he, he just does but if you don't have Kenobi then get Jedi Master Luke I suppose uh, yeah, I really enjoy Ma Jedi Master Luke. So, uh, here's, here's the ones I, I have, what did I call them? The, um, lop -zistance. It they're lopsided, it's a, one of the stupidest names in the whole world, but I have Relic 7 on Jedi Training Ray and R2-D2, and then Relic, and then Gear 11, Gear 10, and Gear 10 on the Hero Bros. This team still does really well on offense, and it takes down a lot of those really bad, uh, first order teams it takes down a lot of different like bounty hunter teams and the strength of this team is it gets a ton of turn meter has a ton of control and then it kills you with with its uh, ability to uh, just do percent health damage because of it's not extortion whatever it is expose that's what the name is it, it kills you with exposed damage, and uh, this team, if, if you get it clocked right, if you start getting it spinning, you, you, the opponent the team doesn't really ever have a turn. So this team is a lot of fun, even with lower gear levels, and, and it works even if your Jedi Training Ray isn't Relic 7. She's just 7 because of requirements for Jedi Master Luke, but... Yeah, uh, this this team worked really well when she was gear 9, and everyone else was gear 9 as well. I was still killing Relic first order teams. True story. Commander Luke and company. This team is amazing on offense, great on defense as well at this level, uh, because a lot of people don't realize that General Grievous can counter it if they have Grievous uh, modded the right way, which most people don't, but... Uh, you can, most people don't have Commander Luke modded the right way either. Lots of tenacity on this squad, guys. It sounds silly. The only one who doesn't really care about tenacity is Han Solo. The rest of them 
to some degree or other need a lot of tenacity. I also want more relic levels on Commander Luke, but as I keep saying, relic levels are in short supply on this account. So this team can kill so much stuff. General Skywalker, if they put it down, uh, any bounty hunter team, any team with any team with anything that isn't a galactic legend, this team has a good shot of taking it down. Even Darth Revan teams, especially now that there's Darth Talon in the mix, Darth Revan teams don't do nearly as much damage, and so you can kind of jump in and start taking out some Darth Revan teams. I mean, uh, it, it can be a little tricky when Darth Talon is in there and they've modded their Dark Basti with a ton of health. Uh, it, can, it can get dicey. That's not a match I would try much, but this is a team that works pretty well pretty well uh against against basically everything that isn't a galactic legend and even things that are galactic legends sometimes like i, I just recently in territory wars saw someone who was uh, like a whole wall full of people running what was it it was supreme leader kylo uh, with a couple first order and then nice sister and nice sister zombie and daka and this team actually kills the supreme leader kylo team pretty easily <laughs> as silly as that is uh, like all you have to do is kill daka once kill him kill her twice and and then zombie revives her twice and that actually counts as four kills so then Chup when chupio finally goes he just one shots the entire team it's it's pretty legit it's uh, highly enjoyable folks okay uh now we have bounty hunters and i do have zam it's so silly guys i have a gear 12 plus one zam apparently at some point i worked up the gumption to put one <laughs> piece of gear on her the her finisher but she she does have the omicron on her and it just makes the team way faster i think even at gear 12 she's still let's see how fast do i have her is she like 280 speed something like that 289 oh yeah she's 281 before i put on that that finisher but she she's handing still handing the squad somewhere approaching what 70 something speed i i don't remember off the top of my head but the whole squad is uh, not not to mention she's she is handing them some offense and it, you know it, she she doesn't have much in the way of offense here like i think she gets about double this once she gets to relic 7 which isn't surprising but it, you know all of her impressive offensive numbers that she transfers to her bounty hunter friends i mean it is essentially cut in half uh, on this version but the only reason you ca I care about having the omicron on zam anyways is making the whole team faster and this team can counter darth revan teams if i want them to so uh just make need to make sure that that mando is clocked so that you don't have to worry about the rest of the team uh, about him passing the rest of the team you want it to be bosk goes first grief goes immediately after bosk goes again after he taunts and then everyone should at that point have their contract and if they don't you need aura sing lead instead and then you have your contract and then mando's gonna go and disintegrate something and then you know once you kill their one really awesome thing then you can finish them off for fun so uh you know i do have aura sing at what like gear 10 or something she she works I, i've used her quite a few times on this account too but uh this is this is kind of the the my favorite version I, i've always loved boss lead so uh, let's see, I just killed a Darth Revan team with this, <laughs> with this troopers team. It didn't have Sith Marauder, that was kind of the key, but this team, this team has legs, guys. It's not because of Relic 8 on Piet, it's because Piet is pretty fast, and as long as Piet, Piet is fast enough, and I have a character that can bridge the speed, which is usually Stark, sometimes it's going to be Dark Trooper, I forget which one it is in this case, but I have an Imperial Troopers faction essentials video you guys should go check out if you are interested but admiral piet really really good in this role um as as long as he's fast and then dark trooper does all the heavy lifting and yeah i, I took out a fully relic well it wasn't fully i think I, I think that was they were missing one character with relics but it you know darth revan and malik and everyone were relic five and up and they still just destroyed him because dark trooper does his dirty work really really efficiently even at relic 2 i would recommend more relics but i can't find any more relics i have to put relic 8 on piet for stupid reasons so another one on offense that works really well i was uh, i was kind of i mean on prevail man i'm missing it too but uh not having dark basti with this squad really hurts it frankly uh you know one of the nice things about not having that many teams and that, that's been a 
that hasn't been a problem on this squad or on this account for a long time but I guess what I'm trying to say is if you used to have Dark Basti on your Palpatine team because of all the debuffs and everything and the benefit you get from turn meter, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Mara Jade fills in that role probably even better than Dark Basti. Or, you know, she, they're like almost the same character in, in a lot of ways. They they do operate differently, of course, but they she is she is so much fun with Palpatine. Honestly, this team is really good on defense as well, but this team destroys any Geo team. Obviously, I mean Relic 7 on Vader now, I mean, it's it's not too bad, but, you know, ideally you have Thrawn go first, he goes in Fractures, one of the Geos, uh, like the Brute, and then Darth Vader can actually run a circle, a full circle, and get two uh, Merciless Massacres in a row, so pretty cool stuff, this, this team, this team is great, it's really fun, Mara Jade guys, even at three stars, start working on her, even if she's only gear eight, start working on her, she's really good. Get Darth Vader a few Merciless Massacre rounds, and she'll eventually get a turn. She's going to reset all of their turn meters. It, it's it's a lot of fun. Next, we have Grievous. Grievous did his share of of, of Galactic Legend killing this season. Uh, he can kill Sith Eternal. He can kill Jedi Master Luke pretty well, actually, especially if people are putting garbage with both, both of them. Hey, my, my Prevail Man account actually just one-shot a Sith Eternal at one point you guys love to see week four it is fairly epic and so and that that team has only two characters with relics the others are all gear 11 and then like gear 8 and gear 7 and still kill a, a i think it was relic 8 maybe it was relic 7 say the eternal so really cool stuff in my opinion um this this team uh, grievous wants more relics than this frankly he wants he needs more relics he needs more damage as much health as he can get but uh, as long as you can get him more relics b1 more relics the rest of them don't necessarily need a ton of them they're just this is this is your this is your do it all squad folks this squad <laughs> does it all as you might imagine from me saying that so <laughs> it's it is really good i really super enjoy general grievous on offense it never gets a 65 it'll get you 63 pretty dang consistently though and sometimes it'll surprise you to get a 65 and sometimes it'll surprise you with a 52 so watch out for that as well uh this this night sisters team is also really good uh, just put relics on Asajj and Daka. Make sure you have the uh, make sure you have the Zeta on Tal's in lead, and the Zeta on Asajj unique and on Daka. Give Daka as much health as possible, and then send them into the mix. They've killed what two, three, four different General Grievous teams this season because people don't put Newt on the Grievous team because they think Newt needs to go somewhere else and I disagree I think Newt belongs he just lives with Grievous at this point at most times but the this team is really nice because against Grievous Grievous will go and just kill three guys immediately kill zombie and then zombie will sacrifice herself for spirit and tells in both and then you don't have any more sacrifices but immediately old Daka gets an extra what 30 percent health uh, super nice so you know an Asajj boosts herself up a bunch and and then off you go to the races I, I haven't lost with this comp yet against Grievous it will eventually because it's not a 100% comp but I really like the low gear levels on this it actually works better than high gear levels uh, which, which seems crazy but it, it's true now, Kira with Nest is really good. A lot of times you don't need Kira. I like to have Kira here just as a, you know, if, if you need a way to boost Nest's damage and you don't want to put more relic levels on her, Kira does that. She also keeps Nest a little more survivable because Nest is always countering and always and therefore always getting extra protection off of that lead as well. So, really nice stuff. Nest, even at 6.2, is constantly soloing teams because people don't have enough teams to put down a lot of really good stuff on defense yet still in, in kyber i mean it's just tough at 6.2 you, you can't put all good teams on defense hunter and company all these bad batch guys i i've put some more gear on them but still uh, even at gear eight they work well I, I do have echo at a fairly quick speed he wants to be the fastest on the team though it doesn't really work super well i mean so so he's at 312 great that that's wonderful and uh, you know we, we should all try to em emulate echo more but the thing is you need tech to go next 
And when Tech goes, I mean, you can put a Zeta on him to give him another, what, eight speed. But, I mean, unless Echo is able to generate enough turn meter to have Tech bridge that, it, that speed gap, then, I mean, it's almost... I don't know, having Echo go first it, at that speed is really nice. Echo also goes really well with like a Padme team as well. Just just throwing it out there. But uh, Tech, Tech is really nice. He needs to be somewhat fast. And then, you know, he stuns everyone right after Echo goes. And then if Wrecker goes next, he can double two turns stun them if he has Omega with him. And then everyone's got true damage and you just myrtleate the whole team even at lower levels i'm really excited to take this team into some kind of like relic first order team I, I think it's going to work really well as long as echo goes first this one is just a representation of a lot of times i ran out of teams and had to create something in watt because i don't have a ton of galactic legends watt is usually available toward the end and we can create something weird so we can we don't even need leadership. I, and I remember I used Zalbar lead at one point with mission and, uh, you know, with, with this exact team. And then you just put the tank tech on Zalbar and the weapons tech on Wampa and let Wampa slowly over time take him out. And then Zalbar heals from Watt and from his natural stuff with mission. And it, it worked pretty nicely. I mean, you can't, it's not a world beater team, but it, it can beat a lot of nice sisters teams, for instance. So just something to be thinking about. And finally, this is a team that is brand new for me. I'm, I'm going to be trying it at some point. I haven't decided if I'm going to put the Omicron on dash yet I almost think I will uh, frankly it seems kind of crazy of me but I don't know uh, putting the Omicron on him would make this team a lot better I put the Zeta onto Vander Chewie and that means that as long as Vander Chewie doesn't die which he's rel he's gear 8 so granted he's gonna die fairly easily but if I can keep him alive then the rest of the team will slowly over time work their way through another team so uh, you know young Han can slowly ramp up his damage even at gear 8 uh, I don't know this isn't going to be a world beater team either but it's a nice thing to have in the back in my back pocket and I definitely will be sciencing with it when I have the available banner so that's it for teams for my alternate account I'm going to be putting out a prevail man account video here pretty soon he's in chromium and has two more teams he has to place on defense for some for some crazy reason so uh, stay tuned for that that'll be later today thank you all so much for watching and remember that in all things Zareth prevails so does so do his alts <laughs> it's crazy